I'm Dr. James Murrow. I'm a psychiatrist. I'm a professor of psychiatry and neuroscience at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. I'm also the director of the Depression and Anxiety Center for Discovery and Treatment. Ketamine is an anesthetic drug that's been available in the United States since the 1950s. Um, and it's been used in you know, millions of adults and, and, and children as an anesthetic. About two decades ago, initial studies were starting to show that a ketamine, which is an anesthetic, could lead to uh, a rapid improvement in depression in individuals with uh, what we would sometimes call treatment-resistant depression. It means they don't unfortunately do well with sort of standard uh, antidepressant medicines or, or psychotherapy. Um, a lot of people do very well with these interventions, but unfortunately a proportion of individuals don't. And that's really where we're looking for new treatments. And ketamine started showing a signal that it could be antidepressant uh, in small studies. Now, this was um, a, a big deal at the time because pretty much every medicine we had had to treat depression worked on a similar system in the brain or set of systems, um, things like serotonin or norepinephrine. Um, and they tended to, to take several weeks to start working. So you would prescribe a medicine today and the patient may start feeling better in a few weeks or even longer, even a few months. Um, so that's not ideal. Uh, and ketamine showed that um, it could work within a matter of hours or days. And it worked on a brain system that was totally different uh, from so the standard antidepressant. So for a number of reasons, the field, um, uh, it caught the attention of the field. And many studies later, um, there's now even a approved form of ketamine, if you wish, called S-ketamine uh, on the market uh, uh, for depression. Um, and it's really sort of the first medicine that's not um, chemically like the other medicines uh, that, you, that you, may, uh, you may have heard about. So ketamine is approved in the United States as an anesthetic. It's typically given via intravenous infusion. Um, and studies have shown that it can be helpful to relieve depression. Um, it should be noted that ketamine itself is not approved as an antidepressant in the United States, but is fairly commonly prescribed now in some areas, what's called off-label, where a doctor could prescribe a medication even though it's not approved for that indication. And that's the case with ketamine um, that may be available from psychiatrists or um, anesthesiologists even in the community where an individual would come in and be hooked up to an infusion uh, cardiac monitoring, and they would get an infusion of this anesthetic medication as an off-label treatment for severe depression. So some of the early studies uh, of ketamine show that in individuals with severe or chronic depression, or what we call treatment-resistant depression, even a single or a set of a few infusions in some patients could make a real difference, um, and they could experience a relatively rapid lifting uh, of, of their depression. Yeah, so, so right now ketamine is available through many providers in the community, uh, different services. Uh, at Mount Sinai, we offer a form of ketamine called S-ketamine um, for treatment-resistant depression, which is actually an FDA-approved form of ketamine for that. Um, um, other places offer both the IV ketamine, which is off-label, and the approved version. They both tend to work the same in the brain and the body. Um, so in places like New York, you can get intravenous ketamine from uh, typically a psychiatrist or an anesthesiologist. And what I always tell patients is just, um, you know, you got to do your homework, um, uh, make sure the person um, has a reputable practice, they're licensed, and you want to get a sense of if they have good safety monitoring. Um, so they should be measuring your blood pressure before and after treatment. Uh, and, and that type of thing. But if, if it's done in a, um, a good medical setting, it can be a very safe and effective intervention. So the mainstay of treatment for depression is psychotherapy and medications. Uh, medications typically uh, increase the levels of common neurotransmitters in the brain um, that a lot of people have heard about, like serotonin or norepinephrine. Uh, these are medicines that we call SSRIs, or SNRIs. These are first-line treatments, uh, medicines for depression. 
And many patients with depression will do well um, either on a medicine, a therapy, or a combination of the two. Um, for a proportion of individuals, unfortunately, they don't do well with those medicines. And after a doctor uh, has prescribed several series of these medicines or psychotherapy has been tried and an individual still has depression, which is not remitting, um, we might call that treatment resistant depression or TRD. And it's really just a term to help us in the field understand there's a group of individuals that we need to do better to treat. So whether it's things like uh, ketamine or other advances in treatments, they need something other than sort of standard first line um, medications.